Hey, y'all guys, it's the Tappan Dillard Podcast. Welcome, another week, another episode. What season, Tappan? We in season six of the Tappan Dillard Podcast, episode 13. Now, if you tuned in last week, <clears throat> you probably heard me say that we got the, the old uh, Q&A coming up. Well, the questions and the answers kind of thing. And that's going to be in two weeks now because next week's the last, like, episode of the uh, season where it ain't a Q&A. And then the final episode of the season, which will be episode 15, that's the Q&A. Now, the questions started coming in last week. Uh, I will say, if you texted me or you emailed me, just make sure you put, you know, podcast Q&A or season six podcast Q&A in the subject line of the email or somewhere in the text message say, hey, Tabin, this is for the Q&A. Because uh, otherwise, you know, folks will text me or message me uh, often enough with just questions. And I think, oh, they just need to an answer real quick. I, d- I don't think, oh, this is for the for the podcast Q&A episode necessarily. So I'm trying to keep de- track of them as they come in. And I know folks already sent some in this week. Uh, I even had an idea. Someone sent in for uh, a new podcast shirt. Uh, we got a podcast shirt, uh, but it ain't it ain't as, as probably the be- the person that sent us in. Uh, Troopy told probably had a better idea for a podcast shirt than than we got right now. But we got one, um, and it's a good one. But uh, we got folks out there with really good ideas too. So, anyways, I'm gonna have a link in the show notes today to the the Tavern Dealer podcast shirt that we got right now, and then uh, the Pico Boone shirt. The Pico Boone. Uh, I'm wearing that shirt right now, and you know that if you watch it on the uh, YouTubes. I think I say that before, like, oh, you can probably see I'm wearing this shirt, but then I realized the YouTubes videos is like from my shoulders up, so it's only like you see the shoulder part of the shirt, and a lot of times the design, the art design that's on the shirt ain't on the shoulders. You know, it's like in the middle of the shirt where, where most designs go. So I don't know. Pickle boom. Anyways, that shirt's going to be in the show notes today. And also, uh, we in watermelon helmet season now and cannonball season. There's going to be some more videos about all that coming up. But I got cannonball champ shirt. I'll put that in the show notes. There's a tank top, too, to that one. And then... um watermelon helmet share it didn't wear it share the watermelon wear the helmet bank bank and so we got new watermelon helmet videos that came out this past week at least one maybe two and then i got uh you know more coming up this week and we on tuesdays i think today is may the 23rd is that what we're calling it now so if you're listening to this on the day that the episode comes out we uh looking we pickle booning over the horizon at june's almost I mean, summer's here. It's time to get out that sunscreen, get out your tank top, sun's out, gun's out, fun's out, you know, is the way I see it. And there's a lot going on. Now, one thing I forgot to mention last week in the podcast, uh, it's like a radio show. It's for your ears. This is the Tabin Dillard podcast. By the way, I'm Tabin Dillard, in case I didn't say that yet. And you're like, when, when is Tabin going to start talking? No, that's been me the whole time. That's been me the whole time. Uh-huh. But what we got going on is I didn't say this last week, but uh, that we was going to have a fishing tournament in town. I meant to say that last week on the podcast. I just forgot forgot but we did have one anyway even though i didn't tell y'all about it uh this past week so i got a little update on the fishing tournament and then of course uh you know cricket she's been delivering produce now uh here in the spring and heading into the summer to the burger shed so she's been busy down there i seen her at the burger shed making a delivery this week and then bud down there he's pretty happy because team burger shed that's the softball team i'm on we've been winning for the most part we won more than we lost we headed into this week's game uh three wins to one loss uh and you know we we filled a pretty good team it's not just that we filled a pretty good team but we got some experience behind us we got some experience we've been here before we've been on the field before we played most of us played together as a team before you know we got what you call the old faithfuls that come back most every season, J.T. Whitlow, Morton Whitell, Myron Curtis, Russell Tucker, Rance Barnhart, uh, Rusty Tidwell, you know, and then we got Brody Childress, and we got Cody Mantell this season. They kind of new additions. Brody's been on the team, then he's off the team, now back on the team. Don't matter no how, you know, we showing up and playing, and we win, and we beating other teams. How'd that go? We've been beating other teams on the softball field. So Bud's happy about that, you know, because I think that make your business look good. It don't make your burgers taste no better. They's already good burgers. But then you say, oh boy, the softball team in town that's wearing them shirts, a day ain't bad. I ain't saying we the best. We ain't never won a championship or nothing like that. But we are three three games wins to one game's lost uh, this early in the season. So I'm happy about that. Uh, the team pretty much happy about that. And Bud's smiling about it. So that's win, win, win. I'll give you an update, you know, on this past week's uh, softball game here in a little bit. But 
I kind of want to get into this fishing tournament uh, because uh, that was the big thing this week. Now, in the past, if you listen to my podcast, you probably know that I've had uh, Cricket's granddaddy as a fishing partner like once or more than once. And uh, I guess it would not be an understatement or it would be. Yeah, it would be an understatement. Let me think. Yep, it would be. It would be an understatement to say things went bad. I mean, did they go bad? Oh, worse than that. It just wasn't a good fit and for a number of reasons. If you want to go back and listen to earlier seasons of the podcast, you can look up the fishing tournament uh, episodes. So I wasn't too sad. There was no crying over the spilt milk, as they say in Spain, uh, when Cricket's granddaddy had to go to a family reunion. Now, Cricket and her granddaddy are obviously related. That's what makes him her granddaddy. So she was at that reunion, too, which means kind of an early one. You know, I feel like you reun, you know, in Junes and Julys and August when the kids are out of school, out of the school house and into the city poo. But anyhow, they had one, and so Cricket was out of town with her granddaddy, so they didn't have no part in that uh, fishing tournament. And truth be told, uh, I wasn't, like, sad about that. I really wanted to just give it a try on my own anyhow. And I got there early, and I don't know if Meemaw's in a good mood, or maybe she just wasn't thinking, or I caught her, you know, at a good time where she just had other things on her mind, but she let me borrow her 91 Buick Regal uh, to drive out to fishing clips. You know, that's the bait and tackle shop that Rance Farnhart runs. I told you he's on my softball team. You already know that, but he gives haircuts out there. I got a haircut this week. Look at that. See how shorn my hair is? I mean, if you're watching the video, if not, just know that my hair got shorter uh, since the last time I uh, did the, the podcast episode last week. But Rance cut haircut on, uh, he cuts hair out on the patio there, and he served good fish and chips. But, you know, we renamed it this year's Fish and Clips out there. And so I got out there early just because I get sighted. You know, like if you got a game to go to or a tournament or something to be at, uh, you, you either have a hard time sleeping the night before or you, uh, and the kids are probably doing it right now, thinking about school getting out, or even summer camp, or whatever they're looking forward to, and uh, that night before, boy, it's hard to keep them into bed, and they just, hey, just close your little eyelids, your little tight kind of thing, and then, uh, or you, you get up, and it's the day of the big event, and you're there way earlier than you need to be, and you're just pacing around like a puma in a cage, or whatever kind of thing, so I got out there, and I seen Donnie Wayne Chambliss, he at that repair shed just 100 yards from fishing clips right there on the property next to the lake, and he fixed everything, he fixed anything with a two-stroke motor, motor, uh, motor, motor, he, he fix anything with a two-stroke motor. I mean, he do have motor oil out there, but you ain't got to fix that. Sometimes you you use that to fix things. Uh, from what I understand, you know, I ain't a motorologist, but I do know that he fixed stuff out there from uh, motors for boats, uh, ATBs. Uh, sometimes he'll do a little car repair, truck repair, but mostly it's, you know, the little motors kind of thing. And he got a boat out there. He got a couple boats. Once he's patching for somebody else, you got to do a little welding, I guess, to get some of them aluminum uh, boats. Uh, patch like Attaway, but he got a pretty good one out there. He let me borrow it for the tournament. He said, Have you can borrow it. I ain't fishing. And I was one of 20 people that entered in this one. Now, Rance didn't do it because he was just working the bait and tackle shop, you know, fishing clips. He's uh, serving up the food and selling, you know, all the bait and tackle kind of things. So he didn't even try to uh, enter in this one, you know, but 19 other people other than Tab and Dillard did. You know, JT Whitlow was out there. Russell Tucker was out there. Shane Grubbs, that's Cheryl's husband. He was out there fishing. Sybil Farnhart, uh, that's uh, Rance's mama. You know, her and Jerry Don run that flea market in town. Well, she know how to fish, so she got out there at the tournament, too. And we had a few. I don't think Cheryl Grubbs fished. Uh, Delma Spencer wanted to, but uh, she ain't got a fishing pole, and she ain't had no lure, and she just thought people would give her everything, and uh, they did not do that. Like, you got to come a little bit prepared. She didn't pay entry fee, so there's a lot of things working against Delma, but she hung out anyway because she figured a, a big city event, kind of like that, you know, a uh, county event that there'd probably be some free food or something for her little kiddos. So she's out there anyhow. A lot of folks turned out. But I was out there, a um, lot of folks, 20 of us, you know, just out there uh, putting the lines in the water. Now, I start off with a spinner bait, and if you know anything about a spinner bait, I, I learned this the hard way. Uh, they don't spin on their own. I don't know who named them because it makes it sound like, oh, yeah, that's a spinner bait. It spins. Well, it don't spin unless you reel in the the. the the line slowly and then it's made it's designed to look like it's spinning around spinning around and it's going to attract the eyeballs of some sort of bass or fish whatever you're trying to catch kind of thing 
Well, so I tried that, and I did know that I had to keep cranking on that a little bit, keep it spinning. And I'm out there just thinking, well, when are these fish going to bite? And I don't know. I mean, there's a lot of people who call themselves professionals, but the bottom line, the end of the day, is what I can tell, at the end of the day, uh, they, we all trying to get in the mind of a fish. Like, what does that bass think right now? What is he thinking about? How can I think how he thinks to outthink him so that when I get my line in the water, he's biting on that and he ain't just swimming by it or like, you know, nibbling it off and stealing my bait or that kind of thing. Like, uh, we trying to outthink a bass and I seen they, even the big bass, they ain't got big brains in there. There ain't no way. There ain't enough room in that little head of days. But, uh, we, you know, fishermen, at least me, I'm a no pro. You know, I can't figure them out. I, I brought the snacks. I can figure that out. And I'll tell you, a bag of hot fries, you know, 40 minutes into that fishing tournament sure uh, helped me out. I mean, I called in reinforcements, put it to you that way. And that was good. But I, I was looking uh, all around me. I seen Shane Grubbs pulling them out of the water like nobody's business. I seen JT Whitlow doing it. I seen Russell Tucker doing it. And I'm thinking, what in the world? They're definitely fishing this lake. Maybe they pulled them all out. What is? What are they fishing with that I ain't? So I had to change. Now, why wasn't the spinnerbait working? I do not know. I ain't a bass brain. I do not know. But I was, all I knowed was that I've been here long enough and given this enough chances, and I ain't getting nothing from this spinnerbait. So I'm going to switch to the drop shot. I'm just going to we just dropping a worm in there, and we letting it be what it be, and we letting them bass do what they do. Now, while I'm over there trying to fish and see if this drop, uh, drop shot, you know, going to kind of turn the tide of my fortunes uh, in this fishing tournament, uh, Myron Curtis, he in a human and bass boat by himself, he got hung up on a tree. What he did, he had a white bread and bologna sandwich in one hand, and then he reeled it, he right-handed, and he reeled it up so high, and it went over a tree branch like out of way, and then it kind of dropped down, but you don't want that, because if you catch anything, it, first at least, he didn't make it to the water. It's just dangling, you know, over that tree branch kind of thing. And then second at least, <clears throat> if, you, if you think about it, um, you, you do get to the water, then you're trying to reel that fish up over a tree branch, and that can be all kind of trouble. And you don't want to fish in a tree. They they don't they don't live there. I don't know uh, I don't know who all's listening to this and all your backgrounds. If anybody has a background in fishology, I don't. But I do know that fish don't live in trees, and so I don't know that it would be a good idea for Myron to get one hung up there in a tree branch. So he's kind of wobbly because he's standing up in that bass boat and you know it's on water. So if you ever try to stand up on a water bed, it's similar but way more dangerous. Um, and he's up there uh, teeter-tottering in this boat and he got that white bread bologna sandwich in that. Well, he tried to yank a little bit like, uh, well, may maybe I can just reel this back in. But then he think, you know what the real answer is here? I throw my pole over the branch and then bring it all over like that away and catch it. Well, in the process of trying to throw his pole over, the first time it hit the branch, came back to him, he dropped that white red bologna sandwich in the floorboard of that aluminum boat. And there's already a little water it taked on just from being on the lake. You know how water just kind of jumps into boats at different moments because of splashes or whatnot. So uh, once that bread started taking on water like the boat had, uh, it soaked up that brown water into that white bread and that bologna sandwich. That's basically, basically saying uh, that's off limits. You ain't going to eat that now, Myron. That ain't food. I mean, it could be fish food if you want to throw it in there or put it on your line. But uh, he, he let that thing go. Well, he, he wasn't no quitter. But he also, in my opinion, wasn't using his brain. Because the way I say it is like you don't you just kind of break the line the way I'd say it. And, and, and you cut your losses and then you, you, you put everything back on the line. But instead of doing that and, you know, just kind of breaking it and going on to the next thing, he's trying to throw this. He's trying to heave the entire rod and reel over the branch of this tree that he got hung up on while he's standing in a 12-foot aluminum bass boat. And he done lost his sandwich. And before you know it, he throwed it. And that thing did clear the tree branch. But he loses balance. And he spill over the side of that boat. And he's in the water. That sandwich is gone. Uh, enjoy that bologna and white bread bass <clears throat> and, and free of a hook. There ain't nothing on it. I mean, it's just like Myron's gift to the lake today. And then he had a canteen and it went in the water too. Myron brought his water in a canteen today. I don't know. I don't know why. 
But anyways, that thing offed it, went somewhere. And I think it floated for a little while, but he just was too flustered. He had to get back in that boat. And then he finally got his rod and reel back. I don't know how many Myron caught, but at least that was like a 45-minute detour. And, you know, every minute counts in the fishing tournament. He did not win. He did not place. I didn't win neither. Uh, truth be told, the winner today was Sybil Farnhart. That's Rance's mom. I'm telling you, she can fish. And she won a gift certificate to Fishing Clips uh, to the restaurant there. You know, a couple free meals. I think, I imagine she already get free meals there since her son owned the place. But anyways, that's what she won. And then she won some uh, fishing lures that she can use kind of thing. So she got that. And then I think she might have won, uh, I throwed in a no pro fishing shirt. So I know she got that. And she had a choice of a regular one or a tank top. It just says no, you know, no pro fisher, uh, fisherman. I bring the snacks kind of thing. So she got one of those. She said she might give it to Jerry Don, but I don't know. You know, she's the one who won it. So she could wear it. Wear it around uh, and get some sun on them shoulders if she got the tank top. But anyhow, she's the big winner today. I pulled in four bass uh, all day. And truth be told, the way I see it, everything I pull out the water is a trophy. Hey, you catch a fish, that's a trophy. You know, so I felt like it was a big win today. I caught four bass. Um, and, you know, I got, I, I ended up, you know, thanking Donnie Wayne for letting me use his boat. I think you get farther out in that water. Uh, and that drop shot, boy, did the trick for me. Now, I wasn't, you know, I wasn't even placing in the top three or nothing, but I got out on the water. I didn't lose no equipment. I didn't get no injuries. Uh, and I caught fish. And I had hot fries. So you tell me who had a good day at the fishing tournament, right? So Silver Foreign Heart, she the big winner this year, and uh, she earned it. I mean, she hauled in the bass like nobody's business. Everybody had a good time. And then, of course, we had, uh, we had a softball game to get to. Now, Team Burger Shed, we played Rickards Grocery Store this past week. And I'll tell you one thing about Rickards Grocery Store. At least when they played us, they could not see that ball very well. Like, they, 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 they could hit it well. Let me put it to you this way. They could see the ball, and they hit the ball real good. But the ball, it found everybody's gloves on Team Burger Shed. Like, they hit it right to us all night long. And then uh, Mort Dwidell, he basically came into midseason form just five games into the season. I mean, he's hitting dingers. Uh, he's fielding the ball at first place. Uh, yeah, first base, like a little little angel, just soft on his feet. You know, he ain't like lumbering around, falling all over himself. I don't know what got into him, um, but he's he's doing good. You know, his wife runs Uptown Gal. That's a women's clothing store in town. And they got these creased britches, Mimo like. She's saving her money because she's mostly a Mumu gal, 24, uh, you know, 7, all year, all day long, all year long. She got spring, summer, fall, winter Mumus. She's done with the flannels. You know, she got that thinner fabric. But I'll tell you, Mort's wife, she's starting to run some deals that's piquing ladies' interest where it's like, well, maybe a pair of crease britches this summer wouldn't be so bad. You know, if they give a little bit and they, and they breathe a little bit, you know, that's kind of how Meemaw's looking at it. So I don't know if that's going to happen, but I do know that business must be good and Mort ain't stressed out about no money because he's he's doing all right at work. His wife's business is doing good. And out on the softball field, he's foot loose and fancy free. And boy, we needed him. He was cranking them out. JT saw the ball good tonight. Rance saw good. Rusty always. And uh, I didn't. I didn't hit any opposite field uh, soft singles, which was kind of, you know, surprising. Yeah, that's kind of my thing. I can get them soft singles, lay them down opposite field. But I pulled them, and I'm a lefty, so I'm up in that batter's box, and I pull uh, two soft singles down the first base line. And I mean singles. They they got past the first baseman, and I only stole uh, one base. You know, the whole night. So that's a little bit embarrassing. But, hey, if I'm going to give a real update, I'm going to give a real update. That's what happened. So I'm going to own up to, you know, my contributions, but also my takeaways where, you know, I didn't really help the team by using my speed and finesse on the base pass. But the other side of that story is I didn't need to. Oh, well, how come to happen? Well, because by the end of the game, I mean, if you was looking at the clock and you say, okay, where are we at? Oh, we first inning, the game ain't over. But then you get past, you know, the fourth and the fifth and the sixth, and you get to the last inning of the game, and you look at that, and then you look at the scoreboard, you say, hey, maybe they didn't need you to steal a base. Why? Because Team Burger Shed pushed across 14 runs. That's right. That's two touchdowns into football. But this is softball. Well, how many did Rickards Grocery Store push across, Tavin? They pushed across two runs. 
is 14 to 2. I mean, we 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 lost last week. You know, we lost our first game of the season. Like I said, we was 3 and 1 going into this game, and I guess we just took it out on Rickard's grocery store. We wasn't about to get beat again today. You know, we did not this week. So we four games to one. So you think Bud was smiling at the end of last week, boy, and and we had just lost a game. I mean, right now, boy, he's happy. He is so happy about what 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 we're putting together on the field. And he's doing his part putting together the bacon double cheeseburgers at the burger shed and them curly fries. Now that he finally found a, a recipe for his onion rings too, uh, you know, he dialed that in and now he, he pedaled to the metal with them onion rings. So there's a lot going on where you could be like, hey, uh, uh, Bud don't just stand still. He's making things better over there. Now he got that secret menu. I can't, I guess if I say it, it ain't a secret, but I'm telling you, I know about it and you my friend. So uh, he do have biscuits and gravy. It ain't going to show up on the menu and you could order it any time of the day. Yeah, I've done it. I've done it. And it's good. It's his mama's recipe. He found it. He just tried it out, but he didn't want to broadcast it. But hey, you tell you tell a buddy like me, I'm happy to share the word. So things are good right now for Team Burger Shed. And like I said, uh, two weeks, I'm going to be answering your questions that you sent in on the podcast. That's the whole show is, you know, Lonnie Jane from Springfield ask, you know, that kind of thing. And then I answer your questions. Uh, but I don't bring the questions. I just bring the answers. So if there are no questions, there are no answers kind of thing. But I do know there's some questions already because y'all sent them in this week. If you want to send them to me, I'll put this in the show notes. It's going to be under all them other shirts I mentioned. Which ones did I mention today? I know I mentioned Pickle Boom. And I mentioned the Cannonball and the Watermelon Helmet shirt. So all of them are there. And then we're going to have uh, my phone number, 501-322-6249. That's how you let me know. You could text me and say, hey, Tavin, I got a question for the Q&A. And then I know what it's for. And then I can you know, start getting them organized in a Rolodex or <clears throat> some sort of uh, paper, a notepad, a list, or that kind of thing. You, know, you ain't got to worry about that. You just send in the question. I take care of everything else. And then if you want to email it to me, well, that email address is in the show notes today, too. That's Tavin Dillard, uh, T-A-V-I-N-D-I-L-L-A-R-D at gmail.com. But you'll see that in the show notes. That's how you get in touch with me. That's how you get in touch with me to let me know uh, you got a question. And then I can answer them questions on the podcast in two weeks. We up against the end of season six. Try to see what else is going on. Hey, it looks like I got a few shows coming up uh, this summer, late July. Uh, it's looking like Tulsa, Oklahoma, Newkirk, Oklahoma, and then there might be a show in Arkansas or Missouri around that same time. Um, and so that's that. Then I got a private show, you know, for a private event in Texas. I think that's uh, at the beginning of August, so um, I do that too. So if you got, uh, you know, you got events and you need me to come to, but it ain't like a, a show for the public, uh, you know, for your whatever business or that kind of thing. Um, that's an email that would be taken care of in an email where if you got questions about that. And then I'm busy, you know, I, I've been, I've done commercials for businesses this year. Like, hey, I'm Tavin Dillard. I usually don't say who I am. I just go right into it. But you get the idea. So any of that, then business questions, you can you can shoot it to my email. So it, uh, I may be seeing y'all this summer. That's what I'm saying. I may be uh, in your neck of the woods, and if I'm close, I hope you come out and see me. It's gonna be a hoot of a time. And I'm not sure what I'm gonna have on me yet. What merchandise? I won't have all my shirts. I may have a few, like a few new ones. I don't know which ones. Um, and the softball shirt is in the works. It's going to be, it's, it's supposed to come just past your elbows. You can picture it in your mind's eye. And either the sleeves are going to be red or black. I ain't decided. I got to talk to my buddy Ryan over at Rock City Outfitters um, about that. And uh, you know, have the team roster on the back of it, Team Burger Shed 2023. So that shirt is coming out uh, probably in the next month. And then Tavin's Bacon Bag, that's going to be back before the end of the month. And you know as well as I do, today's May 23rd, so that's in the next week. That should You should be seeing uh, promos for that bacon. Right now, I ain't got a link for you. Not today. As of right now, today, I ain't got a link for you. But that may change. So that's all the housekeeping that I know of, as they say. Uh, it's been a good week. Now, I got to stretch my haunches. Uh, I need probably, I'm going to say I probably need an apple frittler this week, but I might get a cream filled. I don't know. 
Uh, but the city pose called my name, and then, of course, I got to stay in shape and stretched out and ready to launch the haunch at the softball field. You know, just uh, shoot down from first to second base like a jackrabbit, steal that base, head first Pete, right, Pete Rose slide, uh, and that's how that goes. So I'm, I'm keeping limber. I'll just tell you that right now. I'm keeping limber, and I'm keeping in touch with y'all guys. Thanks for the text. Thanks for the uh, emails. Send them in if you got a question for the Q&A, and then uh, be in touch. I'm, I'm Tavin Dillard, and uh, we friends by now. And hey, if you ain't lost a fishing pole and a bologna and white bread sandwich and a canteen because you're trying to throw your pole over a limb at the fishing tournament in a aluminum boat this week, you having a pretty good week. Me, I'm Tavin Dillard. This is the Tavin Dillard Podcast. We'll see you later.